Hey there, friends. Many of you have already seen this video, but I would love to show you guys this just as a reflection on how a true immigrant comes to this country, loves this country, and assimilates and really embraces the values of this country from way back. You've probably seen this video where a Chinese immigrant named Lily Tang Williams confronts David Hogg. You'll remember David Hogg, the guy who took advantage of his popularity on being on the other side of the school when the Parkland shooting took place, and now he's a survivor. I guess like I'm a 9-11 survivor. So he's taken full advantage of that, and he's really, from an opportunistic standpoint, done a really good job, gotten really rich as a young person with a token Harvard degree as well. Here is that video. My name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his Cultural Revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight? Our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. I applaud this lady. It's not easy to get up there in front of a bunch of people, especially whenever English is not your first language. Um, I know that's a little bit intimidating. Clearly, she did this, and for a number of reasons. The first one being that she left a communist country, as she states, and came to a country that has freedoms, where the federal government yet, and at least in big numbers, doesn't have an open license to just kill all of its residents willy-nilly as they want to. I know we've got the guy up in Little Rock and other people across the country that the ATF and the FBI seem to wipe out whenever they want to, uh, Ruby Ridge and Waco. But nevertheless, the government doesn't have the full ability to just go white people out in massive numbers like Mao did. This lady escaped that. And this lady is trying to make it clear to a person who has never really had a real struggle in their life. I don't care that David Hogg was on the campus when Parkland happened. I'm sorry. If that hurts feelings, get over it. I don't care that David Hogg was in the state of Florida when there was a shooting in the state of Florida. This guy was in no danger, yet he's considered a survivor and has made a lot of money off of stupid people who feel sorry for other people and just give them money for no particular reason to take constitutional rights away from us. I'm not feeling sorry for this guy. This lady confronted him and I thought she did a fabulous job. Now, who is this lady? Lily Tang Williams is a congressional candidate in New Hampshire. You'll see on the front page of her campaign website where it states under my, uh, excuse me, America by choice, I grew up under Mao's cultural revolution in China and fled communism for the freedom of the United States. Now I fear the country I love is becoming the country I left. A little bit more about Lily Tang Williams. Talks about how she was born in China's western Sichuan province just before Mao's cultural revolution. And then goes on again, guys, I'll post the link. This is her campaign website. Goes on to talk about her as a child and how she was able to escape China with only $100 in her pocket to come to the United States. Now, digging further on her website, she seems to put her money where her mouth is. Under her list of issues that she is in support of, she does mention Second Amendment rights. And she goes into a little bit more depth than most Republican candidates and most conservative candidates who just say, I was, go I was born a hunter, so I'm a Second Amendment rights supporter. We know that's BS. She says, I am a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights. I support a national constitution carry law. I will work for the repeal of all unconstitutional gun control laws, including gun-free zones, which only incentivize criminals with defenseless prey. We are not vigorously enforcing the gun laws we already have because it's obvious that criminals don't seem to be obeying the law anyway. Law-abiding citizens don't need any more hoops to jump through to exercise their Second Amendment rights. Further restrictions on guns should not be used as excuses to control the law-abiding. 
that in itself is way more powerful than almost every single American-born candidate that I see running for office who claims they are a Second Amendment voter. It's like page after page, candidate after candidate, what's your position on the Second Amendment? I support the Second Amendment and Americans' rights to keep and bear arms. I grew up hunting. Whatever. This lady has it right. And speaking of freedom, she's also warned about the indoctrination of children against their parents and the division of society as steps toward a communist dictatorship in the United States. Quote, I grew up under Mao's cultural revolution to China and fled communism for the freedom of the United States. I fear that the country I love is becoming the country I left. That is why I'm running for Congress. It is time for the majority to speak up and defend our country from the radical left and keep the American dream alive for our children. Again, guys, this seems like a candidate that I would absolutely vote for. If uh, she has a problem in New Hampshire, move on down here to Louisiana because I could find myself getting behind her. I have reached out to her campaign to ask them if I can have a conversation with her. I would love to interview her for the show here and let you guys take part in that. Maybe we can do a live stream where you guys can ask her questions along the way. But this is a person who has lived it. This is a person who has left a country that was moving really heavily in the direction that now we're starting to move in. And I don't mean me and you. I'm talking about the country and the government as a whole that they're moving in now, that tyrannical uh, feeling of it. Now, you notice how in the view, uh, excuse me, the video that Hogg said he can't guarantee any country and its leaders won't be dictators. Well, he obviously doesn't want to acknowledge the fact that the guy that he voted for, Joe Biden, is clearly a dictator and who, at least whoever's pushing his buttons and pulling the strings clearly wants things. They want to get uh, Trump off of the ballot and any other conservative off of the ballot. And they want to just usher in this age of communism and tyrannical rule that they're doing a really good job at using the likes of the ATF, the FBI, the IRS, and all of these bureaucracies that are unelected to push rules that are being enforced like laws. So clearly, there's a totally different... You've got this silver spoon kid, David Hogg, who's talking to a communist or a person who, who, excuse me, who fled a communist country who saw what these types of things can do to a country. And she understands when you remove that Second Amendment, you are allowing the tyrants at that point to do whatever they want. I love this lady, what she stood up for and how she said it. That has got to be completely intimidating for her to do that. But she still sees the value in what she stands for and sees the importance of it. And she's doing it anyway. I certainly commend her for this. I'd also like to mention that David Hogg, is also under investigation right now for misappropriations of the funds of his little 5013C uh, nonprofit says he, he's in charge of. The first month in one of his nonprofits, he spent $40,000 in payroll to himself. Paid himself 40 grand in the first month of one of his little nonprofits. This guy clearly has figured out a way to make money by bilking people and taking money from people who are gullible and stupid and believe headlines and things like that. So kudos to him for figuring it out, but I think it's disgusting and despicable how this guy is making a living. And I'm, I love the fact that we had somebody like Miss Tang call him out on this. The debate on gun control is over because I will never <laughs> give up my guns. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.